Hello guys, welcome to H2O, the A to Z of Chemistry. I'm Dr. Ritu Johar, your educator for this course on states of matter and I hope you are enjoying this course with me. Today we begin with lecture 25 from the course but make sure you watch the previous ones before doing this one. In the last lecture, we learned about the different types of velocities, the root mean square velocity, the average velocity, the most probable velocity. In all these, you have seen that we are giving one value for so many gas molecules. All the gas molecules, they are moving at different speeds, but we are just giving one term to give us an understanding of the velocity of all the gas molecules. For example, if we talk about the average velocity, and supposedly we say that we have 10 gas molecules, right? And these 10 gas molecules, for example, they are moving at a speed ranging from 0 to 50 meters per second right so they are going to be gas molecules which are going to be moving at 10 meter per second they are going to be gas molecules which are moving at 20 meter per second they are going to be gas molecule which are moving at 50 meters per second but we say that for example the average speed of these 10 gas molecules is 25 meter per second okay so this is now one term that we have for the speed of the gas molecules the average speed of these 10 gas molecules but from this average speed value, can you develop an understanding that how many gas molecules are moving very fast, how many gas molecules they are moving at a slow speed or how many of them they are ranging in the values in between the high and the lowest limits. No, you cannot. So to give us an understanding of the distribution of the speed of the gas molecules a study was done by Maxwell and Boltzmann and today we are going to study about this Maxwell Boltzmann distribution of speeds and this is going to be a very important topic for you people to understand so please be very attentive once your concepts are very clear well it is going to be only then that you will be able to excel in your examination right so let us understand how do maxwell and boltzmann give us a distribution of these velocities of the various gas molecules so this is the plot that we have which was drawn by maxwell boltzmann to give us an understanding of the distribution of the speeds of the gas molecules but before we can discuss this let us quickly have a recap of what you have already learned while we were learning the kinetic theory so that you have a thorough understanding of the concept so what we have learned is that the gas molecules they are having a constant random motion and because of this constant random motion the gas molecules they are always colliding with one another and it is due to the collision of the gas molecules that there occurs a redistribution of energy between the colliding molecules one of the gas molecules may be having a higher energy one may be having lower energy when a collision occurs there is going to be a redistribution of energy in such a way that and both the gas molecules they may be acquiring the same speed or they may be a collision in such a way that the one which was having higher speed that becomes lower in speed and the one which was having lower speed that starts moving faster so there is always a redistribution of energy between the colliding molecules but what we have to remember is that these collisions they are elastic and the total energy of the system this is going to remain the same. The total energy before the collision is going to be equal to the total energy after the collision. Okay, but when we talk about the energy or the speed of the gas molecules, if we are understanding the distribution of the molecular speed, the actual distribution of these molecular speeds is going to depend upon the temperature and the molecular mass of the gas. For example, when we were talking about the various values of the different speeds, we talked about the root mean square velocity. What was the value for that? It was under root 3 RT by M. So 3 is a constant, R is a constant. What are the changing variables? It is going to be the temperature and the molar mass. If that is changing, that means the molecular speed is also going to change. So here when we are going to study about these plots, we will be also discussing the effect of temperature and the molecular mass of the gas on the distribution of the molecular speeds. Right? 
But before that, let us quickly look what this graph is telling us all about. So this graph has on the x-axis the speed of the gas molecules and on the y-axis the number of gas molecules. Many of the books you will be seeing that instead of the number of molecules of the gas, here we have a representation of the fraction of gas molecules. So what you can remember is that as long as the temperature remains constant, the fraction of molecules having a particular velocity is not going to change. However, the number of molecules having this velocity may not be the same. What this means is that if we are going to change the amount of the gas, then the number of molecules having a particular speed is going to change. Okay, But if we talk about the fraction of the molecules having a particular velocity, that will not be changing. The fraction of the molecules will be coming in accordance with this graph at a particular temperature for a particular graph. But if you are going to change the speed, uh, quantity of the gas, then the number of the molecules obviously is going to be in accordance with this because the area of this graph is going to give us the total number of molecules. So one very important thing that you can remember from this graph is that this area under the graph is going to give you the total number of molecules. If the number of molecules is going to increase, then obviously this graph is going to become bigger in size and if the number of molecules is decreasing this graph is going to become uh, smaller in size but as long as the temperature is constant and for a particular graph if we are considering the fraction of molecules having a particular speed well that will remain constant okay the next thing now we are going to see is what this distribution curve is giving us all about so if we start from this point, which is the start of this graph, what we can understand is that this point has coordinates 0, 0. So what this means is that there is going to be zero gas molecule, which is having zero speed. There are no molecules moving with a zero velocity because I hope you can understand now that the gas molecules, they are in a constant random motion. None of the molecules at rest. So we do not have any gas molecule with zero speed. The next thing that you can see in this graph is that the fraction of molecules having very low speed and very high speed. This is a very small number, right? So very high speed is in this end because the speeds they are increasing along the x-axis. So this is the region of very high speed. This is the region of very low speed. And we can see the number of molecules having low as well as very high speed is going to be very small. The next thing is that what you can see over here labeled is the three speeds that you have already studied. The most probable speed, the average speed and the root mean square velocity, right? So here, what you have to remember is what is going to be which of these. For example, in your examination, what you can be asked is to label these or you can be given this and you have to choose that which is going to be the correct graph. So here you should have a proper understanding. So the highest point of this peak, you should remember that this is going to be in for the most probable speed of the gas molecules. Generally, what the students think is that the highest point of the peak is going to give us the average speed of the gas molecules. No, it is not. You are going to see that this is the speed which is possessed by the maximum number of molecules or by the maximum fraction of molecules. And if you remember this definition of the most probable speed, it is this speed which is possessed by the maximum fraction of molecules. So the highest point of the peak is going to give us the most probable speed, the speed which is possessed by the maximum number of molecules or by the maximum fraction of the gas molecules. Okay. The next thing that you learned in the previous lecture was that the root mean square velocity is the velocity which is going to be the uh, having the highest value of these three. I hope you remember that root mean square velocity is the maximum. Most probable is the least and in between these two values we have the average speed. 
So this line over here, which is corresponding to the highest speed, right? So this is the point which is going to have the highest speed. This is which is having the lowest speed and this is in between these two. So the root mean square velocity is going to be representing over here the highest speed. The most probable out of these three is going to be the least one. And in between these two is the average speed. But you have to also remember that the most probable speed is going to be very close to the average speed of the gas molecules as you can see. The average speed is quite near to the most probable speed. Fine. I hope all this is clear to you that there is going to be zero gas molecule which is going to possess zero velocity. The fraction of molecules having very low speed and very high speed is going to be very less. The most probable speed is going to be the point which is represented by the highest speed. The maximum number of gas molecules are going to have this uh, speed, right? And then the average speed is very close to the most probable speed of the gas molecules. The next let us now understand what is going to be the relationship of the temperature to the distribution of the speed of the gas molecules. So to understand the distribution of speeds at different temperature from your previous knowledge what you have to remember is that at a higher temperature the speed kinetic energy of the gas molecules is going to increase and that is going to increase the speed of the gas molecules. So this means that it is going to be now a maximum number of molecules which are going to possess a higher speed. In general, the speed of the gas molecules is increasing. So the most probable speed, the average speed, the root mean square speeds, all of them, they are going to increase now. Where we are mentioning on increasing temperature, the most probable speed is increasing because this is most easy to identify on the plot. For identifying which is going to be the average speed, the root mean square speed on this plot, you need to have data. But even if I do not give you any data, I just simply draw these two graphs without labeling anything and I ask you which is going to be the most probable speed for these two graphs. Well, you can easily tell because you know that the most probable speed is going to correspond to the highest point of the peak. Fine. So now you can see that if we have drawn two plots at a temperature T1 and T2, you can correspondingly draw the most probable speed for this plot as well as for this plot. Fine. And if I ask you which is going to be a higher temperature T1 or T2, then what are you going to tell me? Well, what you're going to do is that you're going to just quickly look at the most probable speed at the temperature T1, this is going to be at this value, right? And for temperature T2, it is going to correspond to this value, which is going to be a higher most probable speed value. Well, it is going to be for the plot of T2. This means that this a higher speed than this one. So this means that the temperature T2 is going to be greater than T1 because we know that if the speed is more, that means the temperature has been more for a particular gas. I think this is clear. The gas is the same. We have just changed the temperature. And if we have changed the temperature, the higher temperature is going to be in correspondence to the most probable speed which is higher okay and it is this uh, graph which is having a higher speed not this one you have not to confuse that the highest point of the peak is corresponding to the maximum number of molecules it is not the maximum speed okay so i hope you will remember this now the other thing which you can see from this graph is that the speed distribution graph this has broadened at a higher temperature this is a higher hill this is a lower hill but this is a broader hill now why has this broadened first of all what you have to remember is that the area under the graph which is giving us the total number of molecules is going to be the same because the total number of molecules for a fixed amount of gas that is going to remain the same. So now if the speed of the gas molecules this has increased this means is that there are more number of molecules which are moving at a higher speed. 
right? And this is what this graph is telling us about. The maximum number of molecules now, these are having a higher speed, right? This was a lower range. Now, this is a wider range of the gas molecules, which is having a higher speed, okay? So, the, uh, the plot is showing us that this has broadened and this has broadened because this is more number of molecules which is moving at a higher speed. Now, one thing you can remember is the total number of molecules possessing energy EI at a temperature T is given by a relation. You just have to remember this. You do not have a derivation of this in your curriculum. So, what you can remember is that NI, the number of molecules possessing energy EI at a temperature T is given by this relation NI equal to N into E to the power EI divided by KT, where N is going to be the total number of gas molecules. K is going to be the both Boltzmann constant and you already know what is the Boltzmann constant. Well, this is equal to R, the gas constant divided by the Avogadro's number. Fine. So, this is something that you will be remembering. So, now that you have understood the distribution of velocities at different temperatures, you understand that the temperature is going to increase, the average velocity of the gas molecules is going to increase, the most probable velocity of the gas molecules is going to increase, the root mean square velocity of the gas molecules is going to increase, right? So, in general, it is going to be more number of gas molecules which are going to have a higher speed. Fine. Now, let us also understand the distribution of velocities for different gases. And when we are talking over here, we will be talking at a constant temperature. The temperature is not playing a role. So, let us understand for different gases, what is going to change? It is going to be the molar mass now that is going to change. And we will be seeing the graph when we are going to have different molar masses of the gases. So here we have taken a plot for two gases. One is chlorine and one is nitrogen. And you can see that the most probable speed for chlorine is less than that of nitrogen, right? So the, here the more number of gas molecules are at a higher speed than over here for the chlorine. What is the uh, factor which is different for both of them? Well, it is going to be the molar mass. Nitrogen, which has a molar mass of 28 gram per mole, is much lighter than chlorine, which has a molar mass of 71 gram per mole, right? So, this has lower molar mass and greater molecular speed. This has a higher molar mass and a lesser molecular speed. So, what do we say? We say that at the same temperature, the gas with the heavier molecules, they have lower speed than the lighter gas molecules, right? And this is what we have studied in the Graham's law also. The Graham's law say that the uh, rate of diffusion is going to be proportional to no, it is going to be inversely proportional to the molar mass of the gases, right? More is going to be the molar mass. This is going to be the rate of diffusion. Why is it so? Because the speeds, they are slow. So I hope now this is clear to you what is going to be the effect of temperature, what is going to be the effect of molar mass of the gas molecules on the velocities of the gas molecules, right? So that would be all for this lecture and in the next lecture we will be taking up a few problems based on the kinetic gas theory, the kinetic gas equation, the different types of velocities as well as the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution of speeds. So all these things that you have now studied in relation to the kinetic gas theory we will be taking up in the next lecture. So see you again. Have a nice day. God bless you.